The movie begins with a man named Gary, who drives his tow truck to the front door of a woman's house. He straps his truck to the woman's car and attempts to lift it away. The woman Maddie confronts him about it, but he explains that the court is seizing her property due to owing taxes. She tells him she's unable to pay back her taxes if they take her car since she's an Uber driver but he randomly mentions the fact that she ghosted him after they got together three months ago. She tells him she ghosted him because she was unable to handle her feelings for him, but an unclad guy walks out of her house and starts doing exercise. Maddie swears that he's her cousin, but the guy comes to touch her goodies. Maddie says that's just Italian culture. When he starts to leave, Maddie asks him to give her a ride because she has to go to work, but he tells her he can't and drives off. Later, Maddie goes to work using alternate methods. On her way, she finds her car still strapped to Gary's truck. Meanwhile, Gary is inside a cafe and is indecisive about what to order. Maddie gets into her car and tries to drive off while it's still strapped to the truck. When the commotion becomes evident, Gary comes outside and suspends Maddie's car. Later, Maddie's lawyer tells her she can lose her license if she has one more infraction. She complains about how rich folks moving into their neighborhood has caused their taxes to triple. She complains that she can only make enough money to pay back by returning to her job as an Uber driver. At her bartending job, one rich guy comes to order a drink before opening time, but Maddie gets into an argument with him. He requests that her boss fire her, but her boss covers for her and tells the man that she has a disability. Later, Maddie goes to hang out with her friends Sarah and Jim and they brainstorm a way to get a new car for Maddie. Jim mentions that the human body is a cash cow and says she can sell her kidney or hair. Eventually, they run into an ad where a rich couple is offering a Buick Regal car for a young woman in her mid-twenties who is willing to date their 19-year-old shy son. When Maddie considers it, Jim tells her he's surprised she would consider it. He suggests that Maddie rents out her house, but she tells him her mom gave her the house and would have wanted her to keep it. Days later, Maddie skates to the home of the wealthy couple who put up the ad. When she steps in, she sees the Buick car and soon runs into the couple. They tell her to come upstairs, so she climbs the stairs with awkwardly. When they go inside, they mention that they're looking for a woman in her mid-twenties and she tells them she just turned 29 last year and is now 32. When the math doesn't make sense, Maddie tells them the reason the spot is still open is that young girls aren't interested in such a thing because they aren't mature enough to handle it, but they need a mature woman to do so. The parents agree and they explain that their son, Percy, is soon going into college and doesn't socialize with anyone. They explain that they need someone to bring him out of his shell before he goes to college. Hey that sounds like me, but I'm about to turn 42. Maddie clarifies what they mean by her dating him and they tell her to sleep with him. They tell her no one can know about this, so she'll have to randomly run into Percy at his job at a pet adoption agency. Meanwhile, Percy glumly watches some TikTok videos and soon heads to work. When he gets to work, Maddie soon follows after him. When she steps in, Percy's co-worker, Crispin, hits on Maddie, but she pays more attention to Percy. Maddie approaches Percy and asks him if he minds if she touches his wiener, which surprises him, but she clarifies that she's talking about the dog he's holding. He asks her to help him with adopting a dog, but he seems reserved. Percy tells her he needs to interview her, so she requests that they go to a private place. In the office, she tries to come very close. She answers his questions in a fun way and seems very forward, which makes him uncomfortable, and he asks her to come another day. He tells her pet ownership may not be for her because she seems like someone they take a dog from. Maddie tells him she'll give him a ride home so they can talk more. When Percy sees Maddie's bus, he tries to go home with his bike but she throws his bike in the back. She tries to engage him in a conversation, but it just seems forced. Percy notices that Maddie isn't going in the direction of his house and sees a machete. He tries to text someone for help, but she takes his phone and tells him to talk to her. Suddenly, when they get to her house, he sprays her with mace because he thinks he's being kidnapped. He later sprays her face with a hose, and she explains that she thinks he's hot. He suggests that they go on a regular date tomorrow. Later, Maddie complains to Jim and Sari about how dumb Percy is and says his parents are pampering him. That evening, Percy shows up in a bar dressing super casual to meet Maddie. Percy tells her he hopes his parents don't find him here because they track his phone. While they talk, someone that Maddie had been with shows up and tries to talk dirty about her in front of Percy, but Maddie clarifies he was a jerk. When he leaves, Percy asks why she made love with someone she didn't like, but she gets uncomfortable due to the number of questions he's asking. She soon takes him to the beach, but Percy gets uncomfortable because it's past the closing hours. When he doesn't want to go skinny dipping with her, she takes off her clothes and jumps in the water. After she clarifies that there won't be any sharks and jellyfish, she forces him into the water. While they're in the water, some kids come to take their clothes away, and Maddie beats them up to take the clothes back. When she gets back, he wonders why she would beat them up and tells her it's wrong. When she tells him he's acting childish, she insists that they make love. He tells her he can't make love with someone he doesn't know, and Maddie angrily gets in her car. 
When Maddie can't bring out Percy's phone, he jumps on her hood. She angrily drives on a main road until the cops start to follow her. Maddie refuses to stop so she doesn't lose her license. So she drives over a train track with an oncoming train, and they almost die. After losing the cops, they both head to Maddie's home. Percy tells her he hasn't had that much fun in a long time, and soon Maddie tries to seduce him. When it's time for them to go to the bedroom, they discover a large rash spot on Percy's back because he's anxious, definitely ruining the mood. Later, Maddie applies some lotion to his back. Maddie tries to comfort him by sharing a similar experience she had because he's embarrassed. Percy soon starts smiling when they start talking. He tells her he doesn't have many things to smile about, and she shares with him that she's never left the town because she stayed here to take care of her sick mom. He shares how he doesn't have many real friends because of an experience he had in high school. Percy later apologizes that he couldn't make love to her because he's a romantic, and asks her to go out with him tomorrow so he can get to know her better. The next day, they go play some games and head to the beach. Later, while they sit down to chat, Percy tells Maddie he thinks she was the prom queen in school. She tells him she didn't go to prom, even though many people asked her. He asks her why, and she hesitantly reveals that she was born out of the affair her father had with her mother, even though he sometimes stayed with his real family in the city. She reveals that she wrote a letter to him one day to ask why he didn't want anything to do with her, and she got the letter returned and opened on the morning of prom. Percy gets emotional and kisses her. When Maddie gets home, she tells Jim and Sarah that she's starting to like Percy. They become worried about how things can turn out, so she tells them that he's going to forget about her when he goes to college. Suddenly, a realtor comes to Maddie's door and asks to sell her house because the court is going to take it away eventually, but she tells him to stay away. That evening, Maddie and Percy go out on a date. When they get to the restaurant, Percy shares how he didn't ask anyone to prom because he wanted to stay invisible because of what happened to him in high school. Maddie tells him he's great and should be seen, so she asks Percy to play something on the piano, but he refuses. She threatens to make a toast to the restaurant about how incredible a lover he is and he's forced to play a song. He plays an incredible song that makes the entire crowd stop. When he finishes, everyone claps and Maddie asks how he did that. Suddenly, one of Percy's high school friends, Natalie, comes to speak to him about how she's also going to Princeton and invites him to a Princeton party. Maddie doesn't seem to like Natalie because she's butting into their night. When Natalie leaves, Percy tells Maddie he's thinking of getting his license because he'd like to drive here to see her from Princeton. She becomes hesitant, and he suggests that she come to see him, but she tells him she doesn't do long distance. Soon, he tells her he doesn't know what she wants, and he requests to leave the party. When he gets into the limo, Percy soon takes a swig of the alcoholic wine, and Maddie asks him if he's now drinking. Percy tells the driver to take them to the party that Natalie invited him to. Maddie doesn't want to attend the party, so he asked her not to come. When Percy steps in, Maddie follows him inside and gets into an argument with some boys. When Maddie learns that Percy is with Natalie upstairs, she frantically opens all the doors and looks for him. She eventually finds a locked door, breaks it with her foot, and finds Natalie and Percy on the bed. She confronts Natalie about making love to Percy, but she tells him nothing happened. When Maddie notices that Percy is high, she takes him to the toilet so he can puke out what he took. Soon, the parents of the kids with whom Maddie got into an argument come in to chase Maddie away. Soon, Percy comes to defend Maddie. He gets angry and tries to punch the parrot, but ends up punching Maddie in the throat. In the car, Maddie puts some ice on her throat and sounds like Darth Vader. Percy tells her he would never hurt her, and she tells him she knows. He tells her he's ready to make love, and they both start to undress. Percy tells her he loves her, and Maddie stops because she believes he's drunk. She tells him it's better to wait. The next morning, Percy tells his parents he wants to get his license and he's not going to Princeton anymore because his new girlfriend doesn't want to do long distance. Percy's mom tells him to go stay in the car while she has a chat with his dad. Percy's parents place a call to Maddie, but she tells them she can't do this anymore because Percy is getting attached. They tell her she can have the car because she's successfully gotten him out of his shell, but she needs to let go of him so he can go to Princeton. Meanwhile, Percy turns on the car, and the call links to the car's Bluetooth, which allows Percy to listen to their conversation, revealing the whole lie his relationship with Maddie was. Later, Percy lies on his bed, devastated. During lunch, Percy drinks a lot of wine. Soon, he invites Maddie to the house while his parents are in the house, so he can get them together at one table. During the conversation, Percy acts like a jerk and tries to hint that they come out with the truth. When Percy leaves the table, his parents suspect that Maddie has told him the truth. Percy steps outside to meet Crispin, and they both drive the Buick into the woods to wreck it, because they believe that's all that Maddie cares about. Percy soon heads back into his room, and Maddie joins him. He tries to make love to her, but she stops him. To test if she's really interested in him or the car, he asks her why she suddenly changed her desire to make love with him. Maddie tells him she wants to, so they get in bed. Percy experiences premature release before he can get in. 
Apparently he just dry humped her five. He tells her he's crashed the tree because he realizes she never really liked him. He asks her if any of it was real, and she tells him it was because she's told him things she's never told anybody. He tells her to leave, so she starts to dress up. She talks about how she had to do it to save her house because she doesn't have rich dad to take care of her needs. He tells her she does, but she's going to waste her life in the house waiting for him to come back to apologize, which is why she never travels. That evening, Maddie goes to the beach to cry. Gary soon drops the crash car in front of her house since it belongs to her. Meanwhile, Percy confronts his parents about always doing things behind his back to help him. He tells them they can't track him anymore, and he's changed his phone password. He informs them they can't help him anymore and they need to let him fail and grow. Maddie looks at her bills and decides to use the crash car to continue her Uber job since it still runs. Some of her customers are shocked to see the state of the car, but she basically bullies them to use her service. This, coupled with her bartending job, helps her raise some money and cover her savings goals. After some time, Maddie learns from Sarah and Jim that they will soon be moving out of town because the cost of living has increased. Sarah confronts Maddie about why she's still staying and tells her that her mother wants her to be happy, but she doesn't seem happy. Maddie tells her she's happy, and she likes her life here, all the while staring at a good-looking guy. Later, Maddie takes the guy to her house to make love. She tries to talk to him, but he only seems to be interested in making love to her. When he plays a stupid prank on her, she chases him out. Later, Maddie picks up the unopened letter from her dad and goes to burn it. She fixes the car and goes to make up with Gary for hurting him. Maddie goes to look for Percy and learns that he's at a Princeton mixer with his parents. When she gets there, Percy refuses to speak to her. She tells him their friendship is real, and the fact that she was hurt made her hurt him. When he gets into his car, Maddie jumps on his hood and he drives her straight into the beach water because she refuses to get down. When she falls into the water, Percy goes to help her out. She tells him she's sorry and they hug. They both sit on the beach and talk about their friendship. Maddie tells him she sold her house and she's moving to California. When she gets back, Maddie and Jim surprise Sarah with the news that Maddie sold a house to them so they can have a house of their own. Percy soon packs up to go to Princeton, and Maddie picks him up to take him there. Maddie shows him her new boyfriend, Milo, the first dog he showed her when she came to the store. What a sweet ending. However, I refuse to think that Percy ever got over Maddie. I know I would never have. What did you guys think of this movie? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.